how to solve radical equations. This video tutorial can be found on our website at mathwarehouse.com slash solve radical equations where you'll find some other goodies including a 27 question worksheet with answer key as well as some other practice problems on the web page. Alright, the goal of this tutorial is to be able to answer questions like the one on the screen right here to be able to solve a radical equation. Um, but before we look at at one like that, let's um, first define what a radical equation is and look at an issue we're going to have to be able to deal with. First off, a radical equation is any equation with a radical. So if I said the square root of x equals 5, there's a radical equation for you. And how can we figure out the value of x here? Well, you know, our, the goal of this and any of, the, of today's problems will be we want to know x equals some number. So we need to deal with this radical sign. To do that, let's just square both sides. If we square one side of the equation, we have to square the other. And you probably know that we could write this out as a square root of x times square root of x, which hopefully you know simplifies to be x. x equals 25. All right, so that's going to be a key, a key. What we just did is going to be a key component of solving these problems. To get rid of the radical, we will square both sides. However, we will need to first talk about a situation like this. What about this radical equation? The square root of x equals negative 5. All right, in the first one, we got x equals 25. Let's try the same thing. Let's square both sides. And as you know, um, a negative times a negative is a positive. So we are now going to have x equals 25. Hmm. Now, the, let's look at something here. The original equation I gave you was, on the second example, was the square root of x equals negative 5. If you substitute a 25 in here, we end up with the square root of 25 equals negative 5. This is not true. Whenever you square a radical, you might introduce these, this kind of solution. This is not a real solution. So what we will always do when we're done every um, one of these radical equations is at the end we will substitute our answer into the original equation that we were given. If it works, we're good. For instance, in the first equation, the square root of x equals 5, if we put our final answer into the original equation, we're good, because this does check out. Five, square root of 25 or 5 equals 5. So <clears throat> you really won't know until the end whether your, your solution is real or, or, or not. And we'll always verify at the end whether it's real or not by substituting it in. So let's look at a slightly more complicated problem square root of 8 minus x equals 10. Again, our goal is to get rid of the radical, so let's square both sides. And you end up with 8 minus x equals 100. Let's solve for x. We end up with negative x equals 92. And if you multiply both sides by negative 1, you get x equals negative 92. So we're back in this situation here where we have hopefully found an answer, but we don't really know until we substitute our value into the original equation. So let's see if our, we have a real answer. 8 minus negative 92. So this becomes a square root of 8 plus 92. Square root of 100 equals 10. This works out. Okay, so negative 92 is indeed a um, a valid answer. Okay. Let's look at this problem. The square root of x plus 1 equals 7. Many students incorrectly to do the following steps. What I'm about to do is wrong, and I just want to point it out to you so you know not to do it. They decide to square both sides right off the bat. Let's see what happens when we do it this way. The right side is no problem, 49. And now, let's expand this out here. You end up with the square root of x plus 1. 
We've got to multiply the binomial times this other binomial, right? The square root of x times square root of x is x. Looks good so far. But square root of x, square root of x, we end up with plus 2 square roots x plus 1. All I did was square this binomial. And there's, there's nothing else we could have done. But if you, if you had decided to square both sides right off the bat, you had to get to this point. The problem is, we did not get rid of the, the radical sign. If you remember, that's always been the point in taking the square of both sides. It's always been to get rid of the radical. So, do not square both sides until you've isolated the radical. The square root of x plus 1 equals 7. Let's isolate that radical to get the square root of x equals 6. Now square both sides. And you get x equals 36. And as always, let's verify that it's a real answer. The square root of 36 plus 1 equals 7, does it? Let's see, the 6 plus 1 equals 7, yes. So again, just to draw your attention to this common error that I reproduced right here. Do not square both sides until you've isolated the radical. If you decide to ignore my advice, you, you will not get rid of the uh, radical because you end up having to foil or multiply these two binomials and you end up with this middle term here that is a radical. All right, so let's approach this problem. The square root of 6 minus 5x plus 8 equals 24. Remember, our first goal is to isolate the radical. So we end up, let's do that by subtracting 8 from both sides and getting this. Now, I'll square both sides. Okay. And you end up with the square, I'm sorry, you end up with 6 minus 5x equals 16 squared or 256. And now, just solve for x. So, let's add 5x to both sides. You get 5x plus 256 equals 6, and subtract 256 from both sides. You get 5x equals negative 250, and then just divide both sides by 5 to get the to get the answer of x equals negative 50. Okay, you know the deal. At this point in time, we have to verify that this is a real answer by substituting it back in. Now let's do that on the top here. Let's say if we have 6 minus 5 times our minus 50 plus 8. Let's see if that's oh, this whole simplifies to be um, 24. So this is the square root of 6. It's going to be plus 5 times 50 is 250 plus 8 square root of 256 plus 8 and this becomes 16 plus 8 and that does indeed equal 24 right that's a messy 4 there so this works the answer is indeed x equals negative 50 so just to reiterate um, isolate that radical before you square it all right, let's um, up the ante a little. Try a slightly harder problem. Three times the square root of x minus two plus two equals seventeen. Hopefully by now you know we need to try to isolate this radical. Three times root x minus two equals fifteen, and let's um, divide both sides by three. The square root of x minus two equals five, and now you know the deal. Square both sides. And we end up with x minus 2 equals 25. Add 2 to both sides, and x equals 27. And hopefully you also know we now need to verify that this is actually a legitimately real, this is a real answer. Is 3 times 20, root 27 minus 2 plus 2, does that equal 17? Well, we get 3 times square root of 25. This is looking very good. Right, because this is 3 times 5 plus 2. And that does indeed end up equaling 17. So 27 is a valid answer. And just to 
be clear about this, you could actually, if you wanted to, have at this point in time squared both sides. You would, um, you know, I'll just show you real fast. If, if you had wanted to do that, um, if you had wanted to square both sides right here, right, you end up with 9 times x minus 2 equals 15 squared. And you could have solved it from there. The reason why we can square it here, but we couldn't have we couldn't square it earlier, is you'll notice we don't have a binomial here. Um, the problem for this, the problem with this one, just to remind you, was that we actually had a binomial here. We had two terms, a, a radical and an and a integer. And if we squared them, we would end up having to. Um, multiply the binomials out and get this trinomial and still have the radical. Here you could, if you really wanted to, square it out and you know you, you, you do still end up getting rid of the radical, but I think it's easiest just to get rid of the coefficient 3 and um, keep your numbers nice and small. Square, squaring 5 is nicer to think about than squaring 15. So in general I would say just try to always get that um, get the radical alone and get rid of any coefficients just to keep the numbers smaller. All right, so let's up the ante even a little more. Let's try this problem. x minus 1 equals the square root of 15 minus 7x. All right, well, we've got our radical isolated, so let's just do what we've done before. Let's uh, square both sides. And here, when you multiply this out, you get x squared plus 1 minus 2x. And over here, you end up with 15 minus 7x. All right, and let's just simplify this a little. x squared plus 5x plus 1 equals 15. And bring the 15 over. You're going to end up with x squared plus 5x minus 14 equals 0. 14. So, <clears throat> quadratic equation, uh, but it does factor nicely into x plus 7, x minus 2. All right, so when you solve this out, you end up with x equals negative 7, x equals 2. And we got to do what we've done a lot, which is um, substitute it into our original equation. And let's see, does negative 7 minus 1 equal the square root of 15 minus 7 times minus 7. Right? Negative 7 minus 1 is negative 8. Um, 15 plus 49. So does negative 8 equal the square root of 64? And the answer is no. Right? So negative 7 doesn't work. Let's now check 2. Can we say 2 minus 1 equals the square root of 15 minus 7 times 2? 1 does indeed equal 15 minus 14, and this works. All right, so that's it for solving radical equations. Visit the website mathwarehouse.com to get more uh, information on this topic.